We're going to plant the tomatoes deep, up to this deep. So all of this will be below the ground. So what I'm going to do is gently take off this leaf right here. And all of this will grow roots. And it will make a stronger tomato in the end. Welcome back to our channel, Hume's Little Homestead. You might have caught it on the last video. Levi mentioned that we are heading out on a trip. So I'm really excited about this trip, but I have a lot to get done before we leave. The thing about this trip is Ryan is staying home. So I am really gonna miss him <laughs> while we're on the road. And we'll talk more about the trip when it comes. Today though, I am preparing to leave. So I am getting everything in order. In here, I'm not gonna worry about this overgrown brush. These were marigolds, see how huge they got. And grass, I'm not gonna worry about this stuff. Our ducks are living in here right now and I think they like that extra stuff. But I am needing to trim back my sun chokes. These are also called Jerusalem artichokes and you can see they're starting to come back. And I put them over here because I didn't mind if they took over this area. And as you can see, they don't get that much water. So they still grow very well, even though they don't get watered as often as I would like. But anyway, all I'm going to be doing is cutting down. Ouch. I'm going to be trimming them at the stems. Some of them are already falling over. So I'm just going to be trimming them right here at the stems so that they can grow their new growth and get these out of the way. Now, Jerusalem artichokes grow a tuber at the bottom. I have not tried them yet, but I've heard that they taste similar to potatoes. This plant is in a sunflower plant and it will come back every year and it is a very invasive plant. So you want to plant it somewhere that it you don't mind it's going to take over and just be. I had the rhubarb over here, but we went ahead, well, I went ahead and dug it up and planted it somewhere else. So, today I'm doing that. I can finally plant my blueberry bush in the ground. So, I am going to be planting my blueberry bush in the ground, taking it out of that pot. I need to finish weeding and mulching this garden here, this flower garden. And I'm going to start, I'm not sure if I'm gonna have time to do all of these things today. I'm gonna to start getting out all of the weeds from underneath here because I need to plant my tomatoes tonight. So we bought weed fabric. I'm gonna try weed fabric for the very first time. And, but I need to get these out of here before we put down the weed fabric. Here's the weed fabric we bought. We just got it at Walmart. All right. Those are my tasks for today. Here's how they look when they start to grow. Very similar to sunflowers. Like I said, they're in the sunflower family. And I think this will be the year that we can dig some up and taste them. I was gonna do it last fall, but I just didn't get around to doing it. So this year we'll definitely dig some up and taste them. The first year I planted them, I wanted to leave them all just to make sure they all got a good start. 
and you can see they spread really well last year. So this is the third spring that we've had them. And we'll try them this fall. Lesson I learned today, you can never have too much mulch. <laughs> well, I still need to do that section and a little bit of that section, but I think we're good before I leave on my trip. Maybe Ryan will do that for me. I wanted to get a close-up of one of these flowers, or a couple. These are dahlias, and they started to grow. It froze, so they had a little green on them. It froze, and they died back, but they came back after that freeze. This other one is real small, but it's right here. It's really hard to see, but I marked it with these two <laughs> sticks before I did the mulch and then something else there's a peach tree growing in this flower bed so I just mulched around it and if it does well I might dig it up and plant it somewhere else it's not gonna hurt anything growing here right now it's kind of cool it just grew on its own I'm sure it's from those peach pits when we did our experiment we threw a bunch of the older peaches out here for the chickens and so I'm sure that's what it's from Kind of funny.
Next, we do the tomatoes, correct? Neither. They have weak stems. I know. They both, all of them have this thing going on. But Is there cutworms in there? No, it's just how they grew. And we'll by that one? Up deep. That one? Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll plant them deep in. No, I'm not speaking to Uncle Steven no. anymore. <laughs> Mommy, tell him what you're doing. Hi, we are planting wow. tomatoes. And the filmer. I don't know where to put this one. <laughs> oh, she's got a plant in her hands. Look, she put it right there. There's some green stuff right there. You just can't see it because it's blending in. She's going over there. Look, she's got another plant. These are tomato plants, right, Mom? Yep. So we're planting tomato plants. Why'd you say yes, Caden? My life won't be invaded with plants. Every step with caution. There's a man, Caden. Mommy's got another tomato plant. Look, we're almost out. Now turn the camera around and talk to it. Okay. So, Mommy is planting. And I want to dig, but Daddy won't let me. He said he's digging. Emmett! Emmett! I'm going to take you to Emmett. Because, yeah. It doesn't need to make sense. Say hi. Hi. Are you over there? Mm -hmm. Run home. I think that plant, Katie, that plant needs to scoot a little bit more. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm going to turn the time back over to Mom. Big plant growing right here. And there's less space across. Oh, I have four good. right there. So, should I put this one here? No. That corner is fine. No, this one literally just needs to go over like half a foot of all. Not a bunch. Why? See? Because there should be six under six. We're gonna get seven because there's one in the corner. Put oh, in. that's what's going on. Perfect. Now there's a spot for my <laughs> flag. No, I really was confused. <laughs> and what you said makes sense. See? She said it makes sense. Don't dig in it. Oh, are you digging a hole? Put the pants in. Emma's digging a hole. Ow. <laughs> Thank. All right. No snakes. <laughs> Gotta get up. Okay. Back to the process of doing stuff. Yeah. Egg. I am gonna. Grab an egg. Two, four. I call this row. No. Wait. Okay. <gasps> I'm putting one right there because it's for mommy. It's for mommy.
That one doesn't. Yeah, get and that one doesn't. 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 What's the doesn't? No! Emmy! That one has an egg. There's an egg right there. There's an egg right there. Oh, I think I found out who did that. <laughs> and then pick it up. This is for me to mom for Mother's Day. It's doing good. And that one has an egg too. All of them have. Need some. That is disgusting. <laughs> I think there's something shaking around in here. <laughs> Tell that Look, again. Listen. You make the camera here. They won't be here. Okay, can I go? <laughs> Some of them are hard boiled, I think, aren't they? I don't think so. Ew, that's so gross. We're getting rabbit poop for the tomatoes. Look, listen to it. Yeah. Oh, stop doing that. Yeah, that is gross. There's somebody over there. You put my like, All right, let's do it on the outside. It'll be raised up higher on the outside, huh? Uh, yeah. Okay, that's good, Emmett. Down in each hole, we're going to put a little scoop of rabbit poop and one egg. And we're going to plant the tomatoes. Can you hold? We're going to plant the tomatoes deep, up to this deep. So all of this will be below the ground. So what I'm going to do is gently take off this leaf right here. And all of this will grow roots. And it will make a stronger tomato in the end. Well, it's night. <laughs> we got all the tomatoes planted and I wanted to show this is how deep I plant them so that their very tops are just barely poking out of the soil. I will be finishing this project tomorrow. Right now we're going to water them in gently just to make sure that that soil settles in around their roots. So just a really slow flowing hose. And I will see you all in the morning when I finish this project. But for you, it'll be a couple seconds. See you soon. Well, here we are, bright and early in the morning. Um, I wanted to point out the reason we worked so hard to get the tomatoes in last night is to avoid transplant shock, it's best to plant in the evening or at night um, so that your tomatoes will withstand the shock of transplant shock. <laughs> anyway, I have one tomato that wasn't hardened off and I wanna show you what I did last year when I put out some tomatoes that weren't hardened off. <clears throat> I just use a cardboard, a piece of cardboard and some small wooden dowels and I make them their own personal shade and after a couple of days you can take that shade off and they will be acclimated to the elements. So I'm going to do that with this one. And this is our first time using this weed fabric. So we weren't really sure how to, to do the tomatoes. Like, should we put the weed fabric down and put the tomato through the hole? Or should we put the tomato in the hole and then cover it with the weed fabric? So what we ended up deciding because we were in kind of a rush was we planted all the tomatoes. And this morning I'll be covering it with the weed fabric and also putting mulch around each tomato.
That way it's still getting filtered light, but especially right at noon, the direct sun isn't gonna be right on top of it. Really, kitty? All right, here is how everything is looking. For now, I'm just mulching around each tomato and not over all the weed fabric. We might put mulch over all of the weed fabric in the future, but right now I'm thinking I might want to plant some marigolds and basil in between these tomatoes. I really like to do that each year, so we'll see. I haven't started any plants, but those Marigolds and basil grow really fast, so I shouldn't have a problem if I go ahead and get it started right now. I just wanted to go over what type of tomatoes I've planted in each spot. So, looking from this direction, <laughs> I don't know what direction this is. We're going to call this tomato one, and it is Cherokee purple. I want to get a close-up of these leaves because they're variegated and they're really neat. This is sun scald, but if you look at this leaf, it's variegated. And I think it's really neat. My Cherokee Purples did this last year. And it's just a really cool thing that they do. So Cherokee Purple. The next one is the yellow Brandywine that wasn't hardened off, so it has its personal little shade for today. It's looking great. Next is Chadwick Cherry. So these will be cherry sized tomatoes. Oh, those two should be sandwich sized tomatoes. San Marzano. And this is a canning tomato and I did two of these. San Marzano is right here. And then right here we have a yellow pear tomato. So these are the cherry type, but they look pear shaped. And those are my kids' favorite. And then we come into this row right here is all cherry tomatoes. And I'm really excited for the types that we have planted to try. This is black cherry. This was my favorite kind last year. My personal favorite. And next we have blue cream berry. Next is Brad's Atomic Grape. And then last, right here, we have Matt's Wild Cherry. And these ones are super teeny tiny tomatoes that are fun. And then at the very end are some Mother's Day flowers my kids planted. I think they're zinnias, looking at their leaves, but it was a big surprise, so I'm not exactly sure. Good morning, Emmett. Yep, there's the kitty. They're sleeping still. They stayed up watching the movie. Right here are more Mother's Day flowers. 
I believe this is a four o'clock. Again, it was a surprise. And these look like zinnias as well to me. And then, I don't know what this one is. <laughs> but it's a Mother's Day flower. So I put their little tag to mom because I thought that was so cute. And right here we have the Martian giant. Not looking very giant right now. It's actually the tiniest one that I planted out. So I think that it will catch up with the others being in the ground and the full sun. And next is Wisconsin 55. Sweetie, so this is another cherry tomato. We like cherry tomatoes. <laughs> Beef steak. This will be a large sandwich tomato. Pink brandy wine. I did the pink and yellow opposite of each other, so I thought that would be kind of fun to see all these different colors. And then this last one here is looking floppy, so it was hardened off, but it's just having a little bit of transplant shock. I'll show you. You can see that leaf there is just kind of floppy. So I gave it its own personal shade. It's a black creme, and this is one of my favorite tomatoes too. So you notice I really like the darker tomatoes. I like their flavor. I don't know why. It just has a different flavor to me, and I like them a lot. Well, that's how we are doing our tomatoes this year. I'm really excited to see how this goes. I mentioned earlier that... We have usually used um, cattle panels to have the tomatoes crawl up, but because we wanted to use all of our cattle panels for the archways, we went ahead and chose to try it with this field fencing. It seems sturdy enough. I think that it will do the job, so I think it's going to be really cool. And like I said, we might fill in the rest of the mulch over that weed fabric. This is our first time using weed fabric, and this is actually the first year that I've bought mulch, and I kind of love it. <laughs> <laughs> mulch is really really I, I see a huge difference in the plants already because they're protected from the heat and the other elements the dirt underneath is protected I should say and the mulch is holding in that moisture and just keeping my plants really happy so I'm thinking a win-win for mulch I think it's a great thing to use now that I started using it in the past I thought I thought mulch was so expensive but it's really not so I was looking for ways to save money and I was using stuff like pet bedding and that kind of stuff but it's even pet bedding is more expensive than mulch I don't know how expensive the mulch is in your area, but I got each bag for $2.97. So I thought that was a pretty good deal. So for like 10 bags, it was $30. And I just thought, wow, that is not that much to buy for mulch. I don't know why I didn't just break down and buy it before. <laughs> but now that I know, and, and actually where I live, not many places carries mulch. So we have to drive a little ways to get it. So our closest Walmart is 30 minutes from us. And so that, that's where I've been finding the mulch is in the Walmart. Our local tractor supply hasn't carried the mulch, which has been kind of sad and weird. But anyway, mulch is becoming one of my favorite things to use. And these tomatoes look really happy. It's supposed to be a cloudy day today. That was what I was gonna say is I watched the weather because I wanted to plant the tomatoes out on the most perfect day and I like to plant them out on cloudy days but as you can see there's not a single cloud in the sky so I'm hoping that the clouds will gather this afternoon and it's also supposed to only have 12 mile per hour winds which is way lower than we've been getting we've been in the 30 mile per hour range so Today was my most optimal day to get these tomatoes in because of the wind and it was supposed to be cloudy. So I hope the clouds come because that would be really helpful. So a cloudy day is a really good day to plant your tomatoes and other things out so that they get less transplant shock. My okra, I left it out last night for the first time and it is looking really sad. I know it got down in the 40s, but I thought that okra could withstand that. It's looking like it's not happy about that it got into the 40s, but I'm gonna go ahead and plant them out. I will show you that on another video though. So I'm gonna say thank you for watching and sign out right now. So thanks so much for watching and um, I hope that you enjoyed watching us plant our tomatoes and what varieties that we have. Comment down below if you have a favorite variety of tomato. I would love to know what your favorites are as well. Bye, have a great day. 
I know I said goodbye already, but I have to show you something so exciting. Woohoo! The chocolate cherry sunflowers sprouted. Chocolate. Cook some of the sunflowers. There's another one. Move that out of the way. Can we cook some of the sunflower seeds? Maybe. And another one. They're all different colors. I love that dark, dark purple one. So pretty. So exciting. While I'm here, I'll show you how the okra looks. This is how it looked this morning, just really floppy. So hopefully it'll bounce back. That one doesn't look too bad. It's planted. This is the burgundy okra. And I put Clemson spineless over here. Some of them don't look too bad. That one looks pretty good. That one looks pretty good too, actually. And the last one is right here. This one's kind of floppy. We'll see how they do. All right, thanks again for watching. Chamomile looks interesting in the morning. It's not opened up yet. Kind of flaps down. And as the sun warms up, they start to open up. So we harvest the chamomile in the afternoon because of that.